Hello, new UFO tubers, and welcome back to Let's Play XCOM The Long War with me, Bloinkulo. So we shot down a new one. It's uh, some sort of medium-sized fighter. And we haven't actually uh, visited one of these before. I don't know if the UFO layout is the same as a normal medium raider or not, but uh, I guess we'll find out today. I decided we're bringing the Super Goliath again, and we're bringing one rookie, because that's all I trust to bring on this kind of mission. <laughs> I, we've got two or three or a couple more to uh, train up, if possible, plus a fair number of specialists. But uh, I'm only going to be bringing one or two low ranking. We've got a Lance Corporal and a rookie, and then pretty much everyone else is like Sergeant or higher, I believe. So we're going to be careful when we bring newbies. I don't want a full newbie squad anymore. You can see we've got one infantry as usual, one medic with a flashbang because flashbangs are handy. We're finally going to try out uh, our eight. Well, finally, we we just got alien grenades and I want to try them out. So you can see the damage here, three to seven, uh, which is further improved by uh, grenadier and sapper. So I'm expecting good things out of our engineers. Plus the arc thrower, either to capture or to repair our shiv, which I think is a good idea. I also changed the shiv loadout. Instead of extra HP, I gave it gyros so it has more accuracy. Because they have a pretty low base accuracy comparatively. And uh, this should help. We've got rockets, as usual. And uh, so we've got pretty good AoE abilities. We've got a gunner with a pretty typical loadout there. Also the lieutenant commanding the mission. And then yeah, Daniel, yeah, this is your first mission. And McGubbins, you're back from the dead. Hopefully, uh, you'll survive this time. Let's get at it. So uh, we'll Strike pretty much one. be recording this one for sure. I don't, Francis I don't anticipate this being request. easy and dull by any stretch. <laughs> if it is, I apologize. But I, I am assuming the smalls are relatively easy, but the mediums, yeah, you're right. Okay, so, uh, we're a little bit crooked here. Where's... There's the edge. Okay. We actually started a long way from the edge of the map. So there's our corner. Um, probably a relatively large map. Mediums seem to give you larger map sizes. Um, again, it seems reasonable to scout with the uh, shiv, because if it gets hit, it's not such a big deal. As before, it'll be our... Uh, um, robotic killer. So that's a good spot. I'm willing to put people up to the tree then at least. And given that there's a wall here, I'd say the chance of getting flanked from that angle is relatively low. So that's our... Oh, that's our rookie. Yeah, perfect. Rookie goes first, other than the shiv. And then the rest of us... I know you could group everyone up together easily enough, as long as you don't trigger any aliens, but that's not what I want to do. Seeing as it's relatively difficult to get up this, this is one of the largest cliffs in a uh, in one of these maps. We're actually not going to go that way right off. I like climbing the hills, but uh, there's no easy way up from this angle. We'd have to go all the way around. I guess maybe going this direction would have been safer rather than going up this side, but whatever. Choice has been made. I'll live with it or die by it, one or the other. Also, we can take half cover behind the shiv. I shouldn't forget about that. Not necessary a bad position for fall day. There you go. Half cover behind the shiv. Could be worse. And the rest of people, I think, are just going to stand on watch, basically. We'll put them on overwatch just behind the line. Chances of triggering an alien should be zero. And if somebody walks in, they just have all the overwatch, basically. And then we'll take cover next turn. That's the plan, anyway. We'll see how it goes. Plans were made to be broken. Now, you may notice we have no sniper this time. Um, yeah, I, I, I would have liked to bring one, but I thought a medic was more important. I hear some clickety-clackety. I'm a little bit concerned there's going to be chrysalids, even though there shouldn't be chrysalids on this kind of mission, but maybe there is. Alright, I think we have the shiv poke its head around the corner. We didn't get any uh, sound bubbles or sound directions. So, there shouldn't be any aliens super close to us. And again, getting up on this hill is actually a fairly long roundabout, so let's not worry about that. We'll just load up kind of in here in this death pit. Death Valley, this is a good place to be. Yeah, I think it's pretty safe to go one step behind the shiv. If the shiv didn't trigger any sightings, then standing behind it should be safe. You want to keep the uh, assault near the front anyway. No sniper to leave behind for once. On my way. 
almost always bring a sniper, I would say. I mean, they're one of my love and hate classes. <laughs> I know they can be amazing, but they take a lot of setup and promotions to really get there. I find, I have found that classes like Assault and Infantry are just a lot more, a lot easier to get to that devastating phase, nice and early. And maybe classes like, uh, like Engineer are going to get there now that they've got um, better grenades, basically. So, that was kind of a bad direction. That was kind of behind us. So that's definitely Stompy Stompy for Mectoid. I, well, I'm hoping that's Mectoid. There may be two Mectoids. Maybe we should really slow down our advance here a little. Um, we still can't really climb that hill, so if there's enemies on top of it, we're actually in a really bad position. I think we kind of back up into here, to be honest. Because there's almost guaranteed that we heard a patrol, and the patrol will find us sooner or later. So I think we're going to be pulling back. We'll leave the shiv up front on Overwatch, and we'll try to pull back onto this hill. We'll pull sideways. So that's... I would say it's very unlikely to trigger any aliens on this turn. I sure hope we're safe to do this. But keep in mind the direction of the sound, and I just want to reposition to a better position for that. I don't really trust that tree, but I trust that tree. <laughs> this is the disreputable tree. Okay, and given the direction, this is actually probably good. If they come at us from that angle, that'll be full cover. The rookie might be open from another direction, but should be op should be protected from the closest aliens. Assuming there's not a second patrol that gives us a hard time. Now we're down to half cover, so hero hex. You have to be a hero of half cover. And... Yeah, I guess we just line people up behind the shiv. The shiv, the safest place to hang out. So this time we didn't really get very good cover. Not a lot of overwatch, but I just wanted to reposition everyone relatively quickly. In fact, just the single overwatch is not very good. But I'm pretty sure the patrol will be getting here soon enough. And there's a lot of stompy... The more stompy stompy I hear on the end of turn, the more sort of scared I get. Okay, so there's panic. There's a meld over there. We're probably not going to be able to get it. I want to put someone up here to have a look. Okay, you didn't see anything. Hmm. I'm not sure what I want to do here. I mean, maybe... We didn't hear a patrol, but we heard a stationary group that was, like, up there somewhere. Which is annoying because we're in a very bad position to fight that kind of... That kind of battle. Seeing as we didn't hear anything, I think we can move Moving to this position. danger tree. And... I think we hold position for one turn, see what happens, and then reevaluate. So everybody reevaluate. Now we hear him from that direction, okay. One of the options is the patrol just didn't come around all the way, they just sort of walking back and forth somewhere over there. Let's try to trigger them though. Sounds like the best thing to do is to try to trigger the death. Alright, you're the rookie, I'll give you full cover though. And you do see them. Alright, two berserkers. Two floaters, probably, and maybe three floaters. Okay, well, we got a lot of distance on these guys. I wish I had a sniper. Um, in fact, they're so far back, most of you guys don't even have a shot. It might be best to actually not even start uh, no firing at them this turn. Let them run in, and then next turn, try to kill. I think that is the best plan. We're going to pull Falding back. Um... And Daniel... Yeah, you should be safe enough here. We're gonna put the Shiv... I actually want you far enough back. Let's put you up on the hill here. What I want to do is give a spot for someone else 
to have a little bit of cover that's in a good shooting position. And we'll actually put Dark... Sh not Dark Shade. We'll put Felamagubbins a little bit closer to uh, where the where these guys will be coming from. And then the, the medic can have full cover. Okay, everyone's pretty good. Let's see how this works. This was my grand plan here. They shouldn't have enough mobility to get to us and attack. I can't imagine. If they somehow do, then... My life is ruined. Or your life is ruined if you're playing today. Okay, Shiv takes a shot. That's a nice opening fire. I'm happy with that. Good reaction. And part of the perks of reaction fire is they don't get an extra move from these. The downside is we get no crits and we've got, I think, minus 10 or minus 15 aim on Overwatch. Unless you got that perk. So we're wasting a fair bit of ammo by using all these Overwatches. Which is a downside, certainly. Uh, at least the Shiv hit. So far, everyone else is kind of... <laughs> kind of sucking, guys. It's not like these guys are small. They're monstrous. Someone hit it. Well, you guys are digging your grave here. You're going to waste all your ammo and not hit the Berserkers. Um, Alright, at least one person hit. Good job, fella. You're, you're, you're the key here. So, do you get a close combat as well? I was kind of hoping you might get a close combat, but that's fine. So, we wasted all our shots on the first guy. The first guy was probably the commander, though, because he's got, like, eight more HP than his friend. We're not going to be using any explosives, but I might try to capture one, depending on how things go. You never know. I think we open with a, uh, assault shot, because you're pretty close, and you should get the reaction fire when he moves towards you as well. Now, if I really wanted to min-max here, I might, um... Let someone else shoot and get the... T that's probably smarter. It's a typical... It's tricky, because you don't get crits on reaction fire. But on the other hand, our chance of critting those guys is so small. I'm a bit scared the mutons will move in next turn, or the floaters, so I want everyone to stay in cover. So, Darkshade, you gotta take this shot. Good luck. Good hit. Now, run closer and get... A get a close combat. We do have that, yeah. Close combat? Yeah, okay. Right in the face. Four damage. It seems like the closer they get, the worse damage you do. I bet you they've got some sort of wonky perk that actually gives them protection from close combat. Or, protection as closer the enemy is. Alright. Take the laser carbine and then the last shotgun shot. And then maybe we change him to laser pistol. We just keep bouncing them back and forth and getting free overwatch shots. Seems great. Oh, you didn't get an overwatch that time. I think we take this shot, seeing as this is like our last easy one. And the kill is fine. Now we need to either kill or capture the other one. We've got two shots from Faldang, a shot from Pyro, a shot from our Shiv, possibly a capture from our commander. And a shot from Daniel. I think we open with a shot from the Shiv. The Shiv does a lot of damage if he hits. And I don't want him to get the kill either way. So it's better if he just does damage. Eight is acceptable. I think we then switch to our... Rookie? Yes. Then the Rookie shoots because he's pretty close. Alright, good. So we've got our infantry and our engineer. Anyone else left? I'm glad no one's panicked. Okay, yeah, we got three left, so... Next shot with the auto laser. Okay. Nice. Now I think we try a capture, and if it fails, we kill it with the infantry. Does that sound fair? Uh, I wish you could put you into cover while we did this. Yeah, we... You know, this is fine. You could be flanked through the tree, depending on where the floaters come. But you will pretty much guaranteed have one chance to capture. I don't know how good of a chance. It's probably going to be like 40%. But I'm <laughs> If I wasn't Let's Playing right now, I would be reloading. Because somehow... You actually don't have line of sight to this guy, even though it seems like you really should. So we're not capturing a Berserker today. 
Ah, <sighs> sometimes that stuff is just garbage. So, thanks, Commander. Nice try, but apparently that was a bad spot. Okay, good. That's fine, that's fine. Keep your cool. We don't need a Berserker right now, anyway. Sure, it'd be fun, but we could just kill some floaters. So we got three floaters. That's fine. Who can see them? You can, but you got no ammo. And your shotgun. The rookie can. And Faldang can. So Faldang opens the show. Seems pretty obvious. And probably just reloads, honestly. Could have overwatched, maybe. Um, the rookie takes a shot. You'll never be able to kill it. I'd like to get our rookie a kill. One's on Overwatch. Eh. Oh, that's easy to hit. One of them has landed. So the flying one is 50%. The landed one is actually kind of open the open. Uh, don't I have a scout somewhere? Did I already shoot with the scout? That was a mistake, maybe. Or maybe I didn't bring a scout. That would be my mistake. I get the feeling I forgot to bring a scout. Just didn't have a roll a spot for him. All right, Pyro. Um, yeah, no one's gonna be able to throw. We could. I'm gonna save our rockets and our grenades for the inevitable mechtoids. So, um, Pyro, you might get shot here, but on the other hand, this might work out. Ah. Turns out you actually don't have line of sight. We're having some line of sight issues today, obviously. Um, well, let's let the Shiv try to get the guaranteed kill. I, I don't like giving experience to Shivs, but because uh, they don't actually get it. But, um, you know. And we'll let the Rookie take a shot anyway. Shot in the dark. Wow! Alright, Rookie! Daniel, yeah! That was much better than expected. Good work. Alright, well we should be able to reload in safety now. That was not not at all what I was expecting. So anyway, we've taken out the Berserkers and the Floater Wave without taking any damage. That's a pretty huge accomplishment, really. Uh, it would have been slightly better if we'd captured one, but come on now, who's really going to complain? Um, I think we start heading towards the UFO now. Carefully again, because like I said, there's a very high likelihood of mechtoids. And uh, I wish I had a sniper because of things. No, um, it's pretty obvious. Uh, it's nice to kill the shielding. Sorry, the, the shielding sectoids if you've got a sniper. Assault works pretty good too with a running gun, so. Let's just move you up, Commander. We're gonna get everyone grouped up a little bit. But no further than the furthest forward we've got, basically. The Shiv needs to reload, so this turn, make sure everyone's reloaded and we'll start moving forward a bit more next time. But I'd say we're off to a good start on this mission. Any mission where we don't immediately get surrounded is a pretty good mission. <laughs> Let's be honest. As long as you're not instantly surrounded by like 20 Muton Berserkers, like that uh, last large UFO, is a pretty good mission. <laughs> All right, looks like everybody's pretty much got ammo now, so let's just start moving up. Keep everyone close together. All right, and especially with long war, we know that slow and st still that direction. Okay, well, I don't want to go to the UFO until the patrols are dealt with, so uh, we're gonna actually about face here a little bit. But yeah, I mean, um, I suppose in depending on the difficulty you play on vanilla, but especially on normal, maybe even classic. You're able to kind of rush through a lot of the times without really having to worry about your life. But when we're playing Long War, that's a bad idea. We got half blown up tree. I wonder where those aliens are. I'm, I'm kind of worried they're in a really good, a high ground position and we're not going to be able to actually get up there. Um, you might pop a wave, but you're you're proving pretty useful so far there, Daniel. All right, so we know 
We can easily oh, get way. that far. We can, we can move as far as those two in point. What do you call it when there's two people on point? Double point? Arrow? Spearhead? I don't know. We'll start making up new names for our maneuvers. That could be fun. But yeah, we can dash people up there, whatever. It's no big deal. Once you've established... Oh, they're just Seekers. There's a lot of them, but they're just Seekers. And they didn't trigger. How Commander can see them? Commander, he's got a thing for robots, I guess. He, uh, he just intuitively knows where they are, even though no one else can see them. And uh, we're not going to move anyone else. We're just going to overwatch. Oh, sorry. I forgot about Faldang. Yeah, Faldang, you can just move and overwatch. They'll be fine. I'm kind of surprised he didn't get an auto overwatch there. I guess the Alt-O Overwatch only counts um, people with just a single action left. I'm glad you all focused on the same one and most of you missed. That was pretty amazing. So there's one dead... Three to go? Four to go? I don't know. McGubbins! Yes! That was a good shot with the shotgun. I'm happy. I'm still hearing Stompy Stompy. This is why we're not rushing. The Stompy Stompy's got me running a bit scared. Okay, so we're going to need to take some cover since one of these guys decided not to stealth. But there's definitely more on stealth somewhere. Who needs a kill? I know I saw some promotions somewhere. Daniel, you'll get a promotion. You got a kill. Commander didn't... Uh, Pyro got a kill. Or a promotion for sure. Dark Shade, Hero Hex. Fell on a Gubbins. I know you shot a Seeker down already, so I think. Well, Hero Hex is going to get a lot of work once we make it to uh, the next wave. I think we give Commander a shot here. Of course not. Sometimes you can see them through the wall, other times you can't see them ever. Aye, aye, Commander. I guess that tree is in the way, or something. Ah, <laughs> uh, let's give our infantry a shot. Faldang, you always need more experience, right? And I happen to know that some of the infantry get a bit whiny if they don't get enough kills, so... There you go. <laughs> you can always count on the infantry to get that kill. Except for the last second when they can't. Um, you can hide behind the shiv, why not? There's gonna be some strangling pretty soon. Yeah, there it is. Uh, it's pretty dead. <laughs> I'm not very surprised. The question is just, is there any more? I don't know. We don't have a scout, so we don't have any battle scanners, right? No, it doesn't look like it. Yes. The only- I don't give- I don't give scanners to people because it takes an item slot, which I know somebody has probably bugged me about. But, um, we'll be fine. Let's just have everybody reload. Maybe leave the shiv on Overwatch, just in case there's one last seeker. Oops, I reloaded by accident. Well, we'll leave Pyro on Overwatch. He's got, I think he's got heat ammo, so if it does show up, he can probably kill it on his own. Okay, I don't think there's any more uh, seekers. But there's definitely something stompy over there. Alright, well... I don't want to get you killed, Daniel, but... I do want you to go first, because you're... Kind of up front right now. So we'll probably move over to the wreckage cover... And then approach the UFO. We've killed two pods now. On my way. Um, there may be another patrol, or maybe we're done. We did shoot this thing down, so... I'm not expecting... You know, tons of resistance. Just reasonable amounts of resistance. Average. It's, a, it's an average sized UFO that was shot down. Alright, so we're safe to move up to that tree's worth of positions. Obviously, sometimes moving up to somebody else like this still uncovers aliens. <laughs> Somehow. The line of sight is a bit wonky, I guess. I suppose it's just... You don't see in a square around your characters. You see probably more in a circle around your characters. So if you imagine all the overlapping circles um, of sight, maybe even a cone if it's only in a certain direction. I don't know if there's a cone. I don't know how they modeled sight in here. In a lot of modern XCOM games, like, uh, well, Xenonauts, um, units have a cone-shaped movement. So imagine a circle, and you slice out a pizza slice. It's, it's a cone. 
Um, I don't know how it works in this version. If you see all a circle around you, other than um, line of sight fog of war, or if you only see, you know, 45 degree cone, 180 degree cone. I I, I don't know. I don't know if it's a cone. I'm pretty sure it's circular rather than uh, rectangular though, or squarish. Is there a square tangular? That doesn't sound like a word. <laughs> square tangular. Square tastic. That's me. All right. So. Pyro, you've been, we've, we've actually had some good shots from the team today. I've been pretty impressed. I haven't seen any like 90% misses today, and that's always a good start. Uh, I don't want to be dashing ahead of the team, but I think everyone can stick together for now. Uh, if there's a cyber disc or something, you definitely want to split up. If there's more mutons, you definitely want to split up. But once you know which aliens have grenades, you know, you can... Grouping up is really effective if they don't have grenades, okay. basically. And we definitely want to try out our alien grenade today. That's of the highest priority. What's the point of having it if I don't give it a shot? Or a throw? Lots Overwatch. Maybe we'll get a direction here. I'm assuming towards the UFO would be the sound. I seem to remember in vanilla, at least, um... Probably larger UFOs than that. Perhaps even an overseer vessel. Um, I remember, I think it was sectopods ended up getting stuck in it and having to shoot their way out. Which I thought was kind of silly, but I did notice the AI doing that. It was kind of fun. I think the problem with Daniel, which isn't really a big problem, it's just... The risky part of Daniel is that I think he's got a lot more mobility than the rest of the squad. So he ends up up front a lot and a little bit isolated. <laughs> it's not really a bad thing to have that mobility, but if I'm not paying attention, it could make you, uh, you know, rush ahead a little bit more than is safe. <laughs> so I will try to keep that in mind as we progress here. Mm, I think we could move to the right side relatively safely here. I'm not going to go to the full cover this turn, but assuming Fall Dang doesn't trigger anything, we're good. Yeah. And now that I've seen that meld, there was really no way I was going to get it in time. I would have had to really rush, and it's so close to the UFO, I didn't want to go there until I was relatively sure the surrounding area was safe. And I say relatively because, as we know, we've definitely learned that it's never perfectly safe. <laughs> There's always something that can pop around a corner and kill you. Hmm. Still hearing stomping. Well, I think we open, um... We open with Falding taking a look over here. Alright, so we're safe up to this line. I think we just split up a bit. And then next... Oh, that was not where I meant to click. You better not die because of a misclick. Alright, looks like Dark Shade is okay, even though she's supposed to be in cover. We'll put Hero Hex right here. A nice central location to throw rockets at them. We'll put McGubbins easily in the center again, running gun from any direction. We'll put the Shiv again, kind of in the middle. Mostly so we've got some cover for someone else. Like Pyro. And if anyone deserves to be left a little bit further back right now... It would be our medic, who is now standing out in the open. You know. Totally safe. Anyway, we're not going to trigger anything, so everyone can just go and overwatch on this line. And then we'll move forward for the first moves, maybe into full cover only. We're going to move Faldang to the meld now, finally. Have not seen anything, that's good. We're going to move Daniel up to this full cover. And you managed to find the Outsiders. Alright, you found two Outsiders. It could have been a lot worse. Um, I'm tempted to pull you a long way back, actually. Draw them towards us. We know there's going to be more aliens in there. And I don't want to trigger them. So pull back, Daniel. You did good. You found them. And then everyone else is going to find some sort of cover... I wish I had more full cover, but uh, this is our lot. And uh, Overwatch, basically. We'll make sure the Shiv is in a good location. Put the Shiv a little bit forward, so he's the first thing they can see. 
And then cover behind it. Um, I don't want to move anyone forward right now on risk of uh, triggering more aliens. So you guys overwatch, overwatch. Although uh, I should move. No, we're going to keep the, the medic relatively safe. We'll keep you a little bit further back from the current angle Overwatch. on Overwatch. And fellow McGubbins, you'll be ready to run and gun, maybe to finish off one of the Outsiders. Again, if I could capture one, that would be amazing, but it depends on how close they get. And they're taking a very long shot. At least it only did two damage to the ship. We can easily repair that much. So, they're being kind of smart. I wonder if I pull back a little bit more if they'll come out. I want them to come out of the UFO, basically. I think that's what we do here. We pull back a little bit further... Because I, you know, I, I think it's the smart, I think it's a smart decision. The thing is, once that guy comes out, or what I'm thinking is, if we tried to rush in there, sure, we could kill two outsiders pretty easily. But if it turns out there's like a bunch of sectopods like right in this room, then we're going to have a similar situation as our last mission where things went a bit wonky. A little bit wonky, you could say. I think everyone else is fine. McGubbins is actually going to hunker down. He's most likely to get shot at. Let's see what, let's see what happens here. Alright, he's, he's in half cover. That's better, actually. So half cover. We'll let our rookie open up. You did good on your last 50% shot. Come on, Daniel. You're the king of 50%. I'm happy. And nobody else has a shot, so we'll have to move a little bit closer. Commander. That's affirmative. Check it out. Now, you're in half cover, but we have pretty good odds of finishing it off. Given how many shots we could have taken, so you're good. Alright, one down. No Let's that. make sure there's a couple overwatches to protect I'll these two. Overwatch. Or at least Commander. Commander's in half cover, so... Make sure they have something else to shoot at if they come out. And then everyone over here just waits a turn. Alright, we picked one off nice and easy. Where's the other guy? Now, if I understood correctly, I think the other guy ended up in the central location rather than the forward door exit location, whatever you want to call this room. So, it's possible that he's not going to work his way towards us and he just hangs out back there. Either way, we did kill one. I'm willing to start moving closer a little bit. Yeah, we can move to here. I like the the edge of the UFO. I find that's really nice cover. But uh, I'm not going to be rushing. I, I want Overwatch. It's, we're not going to rush it so much that there's no second action. Got it covered. Okay. And we've only seen outsiders. They don't get grenades, as far as I know. They better not get grenades. I'm actually going to have the left side reload here. Let's rock. And we'll move Dark Shade to here. At this point, it's pretty safe. On Overwatch. You're on Overwatch. You're on Overwatch. You. Again, if we put the Shiv up front a little bit, it should be the thing taking shots. It already saved us from two damage, which is totally fine. Actually, it only took two. Somebody else probably would have taken four or five, so. Totally okay. And everyone's reloaded, ready to go. Alright, I'm happy about that. I feel like I'm moving forward smartly. That's probably where the outsider is. And then there was another patrol. Okay. Shiv! Well, you killed a sectoid. Not really what I wanted you to kill. Alright, well, we're a little bit out of position for this. Hmm... I think the Shiv takes the shot on the Sectoids, the Mectoid, halfway, almost half kills it, it's got 30 HP, we did a lot of damage. Um, you don't have, you don't have the range there, I think you stay in full cover, Commander, take the shot. Plus the hollow targeting is, is actually pretty nice. Um, but now the rest of the team needs to get closer. We gave... We did not give... Yeah, we gave Ranger instead of uh, Heat Ammo to Pyro. So it's got Overwatch, and uh, the big problem here is we've got no Scout. 
I wonder if we can kill it. It really depends on this shot here out of Pyro. And can and uh, the fact that you're not allowed to get reaction killed. So uh, head down. You got 12 HP. Just don't die. It's going to sting. It's going to leave uh, a little bit of a mark. A little bit of a mark. But uh, yeah, you got a good shot here. It's not as much damage as I was hoping. I wish... I wish you just flat out killed it. <laughs> I always wish that. Um, maybe... The rest of the aliens are just sectoids and uh, drones, so it's not a huge threat here to move Felon McGubbins a bit closer. Do you have... You got 99%. That's a good shot. You did enough damage. One more shot should finish. And we have that shot here with our hero rookie who's not going to accept 91% oh no he's going to move as close as he can and he's going to get a guaranteed more than 2 damage <laughs> or at least exactly 2 damage <laughs> well that worked we had just enough firepower to make that work and I mean okay I forgot about our rocketeer we wouldn't have been able to shoot a rocket that far anyway and just for posterity, let's see. Could you have moved? No, if he'd moved, there was no way he was getting a rocket there this turn. It was not going to happen. I think we move Commander here because the Outsider's up there somewhere. This is a really nice cover. And we move the Medic. Still a little bit safer, but further back. It's only half cover. Is it safer? I don't know. All right. So we just gotta survive a sectoid and a drone or two. Two sectoids at least, I guess. I'm pretty sure we'll be able to clean these guys up relatively easily. He took a sad shot. Sectoid moves a little bit closer. We're still in full cover though. We're still in full cover. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I have to remind the game that we're in full cover so we're not allowed to be killed. Um. Fella, if you could have just moved one more square, you could, like, guarantee kill it. I think it's still safe enough. There should only be two sectoids and a drone. You can move here. You should be able to waste this guy. Pretty sure you'll be able to waste him. Yeah. And who can kill the drone is the question. Well, I think we give Commander the chance. I don't know what his odds will be yet. Half and half. Give give it a shot. It'll make it easier for the next try. Which is probably Pyro by the looks of things. Sure, whatever. Pyro gets all the kills. I know Pyro already has a level up, but it's fine. And then the reason I didn't use Daniel yet is I'm hoping he can find the other sectoid and kill it. Uh, I think this side seems more reasonable. I don't know. Yeah, he found him. And it is a flank, so you got a good odd here. There we go, Rookie! The rookie is doing good! Okay, so the that I believe that was all the aliens from that third pod, or fourth pod. All, we may be down to just an outsider. And if all that's left is one outsider, we should be in a pretty solid position for this mission. Which would make me happy. Alright, you can move up to the door and then probably just overwatch your steady weapon maybe. Can overwatch. All right, we found him. He's probably gonna get. To flank me. We're lucky that we didn't actually get hit there by a flank. We're also lucky that uh, everyone's in. Like, we can surround. Someone opened the door. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you for opening the door. It's not really what I wanted, but that's okay. Um, that we should be able to actually flank him relatively easily. So Daniel, I mean. Uh, just keep doing your job here. You're off to a good start. 81% should be good. I'm liking it. I think we just get the kill here to wrap the mission up rather than worrying about uh, captures exactly. Maybe flashbang. Because the shotgun won't have very good odds. You might... I mean, 40 is not bad, but... You can flashbang it from full cover, which is pretty safe. There you go. Now it will regenerate, so capturing it is always a bit of a pain. 
It's definitely harder to capture these new, uh, newfangled outsiders. We wouldn't be able to get close enough to do a capture this turn. So what we do instead is we put Commander a bit closer and then just hunker down. And then we try to get enough people... On my way. We're going to suppress it, just to keep everyone a little bit safer. Like I've said before, what usually happens in this situation is the alien just moves and then kind of ruins our uh, chance of capture. Because we just kill it on the uh, free overwatch from the suppression. I almost wish there was an option for suppression to... Um, what am I thinking? So you can suppress and then turn off the overwatch. Just reduce his aim and accuracy and keep suppressing him even if he moves, but don't worry about shooting him dead. I think that would be a pretty cool option. Okay, we'll just move you to here. I just want to have a few people with shots, depending on what happens, so that we can weaken him next turn. And I don't really want the shift to take much more damage, so we'll just leave him in here. He takes time to repair. And, uh... Actually, I don't want you to do anything, so you just move again. I don't want any overwatch. Okay, let's see what he does. He regenerates, and he doesn't move. Actually, that was perfect. So, now we need to do five or six damage. And we've got a normal pistol here. Who's got a carbine? Uh, the Rocketeer has a carbine. And we can get close enough to capture, right? Let's double check that this has line of sight with the Arc Thrower. Yes, so we have one chance to stun. We'll try. So, um, I think we open with the carbine shot. Unfortunately, it's a flank. See, that's the trouble. Is if we hit it with a flank... You can do a lot of crit damage. We could just use pistols. Yeah, the pistol will be a flank as well. We're going to kill it this turn one way or the other, so it doesn't matter if you're in cover. Alright, you should get a crit here. Or you could do one single damage. You can guarantee, though, that the next pistol shot when he's at 2 HP would not do one damage. It never works like that. Alright, we'll move you here, switch to your pistol, take a shot. Just gotta make sure I save one shot to kill him at the end. Alright, maybe we should have started with laser pistols. There you go, there's your three. So, do we now... What do we do now? We know that pistols can do between one and three damage. Do we just take the chance of a stun? I think we just try to stun now. There you go, good deal! Excellent! Woohoo, everybody! Everybody, get down! That was a good mission. I'm pretty happy with that. Should be promotions. Lots of promotions. Four promotions! Woohoo! Hero Hex! You can have a free Shredder Rocket, so you can get less weighed down. Lucky you. Pyro, you can get Double Tap, because Double Tap is amazing. It's not as good as Light Em Up or whatever. And I think it's... I think it's better than the other two, so that's what you get. And fella McGubbins, we've been giving you aggression for a... We've been giving assaults aggression, that is to say. And then Daniel, you got three kills on your first mission. That's a good start. Do we need infantry or do we need assault? We always need one of them. You're very mobile, so I think you've got a career in assault, actually. A little bit lower accuracy, slightly below average, so I'll give you running gun because of the amazing mobility. There you go. Accuracy doesn't matter so much when you're using a shotgun. Okay, we've got another carbine, which is very good. And we've got another outsider shard, which we will need. And a little bit of power sources and stuff. Good, 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 good. I'm quite satisfied with that mission. We took a bit of damage, a couple wounds, but uh, all in all, that was a success. So what have we got coming up these days? Our modules are almost done. I want to save the money to buy more aircraft, I believe, is my plan. Because we're trying to get those satellites going. Alright, let's see how our interrogation goes. And we got some alloys in Illyrium back. That is handy, too. No. Sorry, guys. The trouble is, you get six days to give them up. It takes longer than six days to build them. So it's just... Unless you had them in storage and you don't plan on using them, it's just a bad idea. Alright, we got we got all our modules done for our aircraft. 
we've got at least one of each now. Yeah, we can give up some Seekers. I know we use these for certain uh, production, but, you know, for now, a little bit more defense for Africa and some more engineers for us. That's fine. I'm okay with that. Contact. And a large. Well, we're pretty sure we're not going to be able to shoot down a large. I'm pretty sure, anyway. So we'll just go say hello. It's probably just an abduction mission, but maybe it will land by a strange occurrence. And we'll have another crazy mission. Just take one shot and leave. Good enough. You even hit it. <laughs> That's good enough for me. Uh, I will take that. Alright, so what happens? We'll see in a second. Do we get a mission or does it just leave? I've heard that once you've damaged them... No, that's not happening. Once you've damaged them, there's a chance that they just fail their mission and leave completely. That would be pretty handy, actually. But I would prefer it landed and we captured it for the alloys and stuff. Let's see. It's an abduction mission. It's not a huge surprise. Commander, we have multiple reports we'll save that for next, next episode. The it's only moderate, so I will probably bring a couple more... Um... Rookies. We've still got, we've got the third Josh Foster and the third Surfius. I think I've still got a name or two to add as well from the comments. So we might bring one or two of them. Somehow I managed to interrogate him without it popping up. That's annoying. So I missed a few hours or maybe a day of no research. I think it must have happened while we were fighting the, uh, while we had the interceptor out. That's kind of annoying. Anyway, uh, next up. Probably the Muton? Or the Destroyer? Oh, that was the... Actually, yeah, we'll definitely do the Destroyer first. Definitely the, definitely the Destroyer. This will make it easier to shoot down medium fighters, which are called Destroyers, apparently. Excellent. And then after that... Probably Muton. I believe he gives you the weapon bonus, so we'll want him before we get to Goss anyway. Although, I mean, it's starting to think like we need better armor and weapons before much more time. I assume the Mechtoid gives us more mech options. And I know Advanced Aerospace gives us more foundry options for our aircraft. It is uh, a priority, but uh, I think the order right now will be Muton and then Aerospace. Unless something else pops up. And then maybe I'll do the uh, Skeleton Key thingamajigger. Alright, well, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, how's our... Sh how's our vehicles doing yeah we're, we're pretty low on aircraft let's be honest but uh all right that's it for now thanks for watching folks i hope you've enjoyed and have a great day